Welcome to Kitty Unfiltered. My name is Kitty and this is This Week on Trial, Week 2, The Verdict. This week turned out to be all makeup, so let's just jump right into the get ready with me. Now I've already primed my eyes with the Urban Decay Anti-Aging Primer Potion and that's already dried down. And now I'm going to set it with the Benefit Powder Flage on a damp baby beauty blender. Yes, I know they're called mini beauty blenders, not baby beauty blenders, and this powder flage, I have no idea how old it is. They haven't made it in a while, but it still works fine. And now it's eyeshadow time, and this week I've been using the Morphe 35M Boss Mood Palette. Uh, I do want to tell you right now, oh yeah, you can see my ring light, yay. Uh, I do want to tell you for some reason, I have a very rowdy cat downstairs, so if you hear odd noises, uh, my cat's fine. I went down and I checked on her. She's just making a lot of noise at the moment for no apparent reason. Uh, one thing about this Morphe palette that I like to do is, yeah, everything's kind of lined out here, is I will just kind of randomly pick one of these spots in between four eyeshadows, and then the four eyeshadows around that is the quad that I work with. And of course I can put other colors in it too, but I like to just kind of randomly pick a quad of four colors that are already next to each other because this is kind of an overwhelming palette. There's a lot of different colors in here. So I just kind of pick a quad and then I see if I can make it work. And I think today I want to try this kind of right here. Put my finger here, then I get kind of this like a warm purple and orange and then a shimmery orange and a shimmery something in the purple family. So this quad right here is what I'm going to be working with today. There isn't really a good transition shade in this palette for me. All of the browns are slightly too dark and slightly warm. So for my transition shade, I'm going to go into my original Naked palette, since I've decided to pan that palette, and use Naked on a Sephora fluffy crease brush. So as for the colors in the Morphe palette, yeah, they're fine. I get along with them okay. I don't think a lot of them are exactly beginner friendly eyeshadows. I do have to set any base with a powder that is not a Morphe shadow because even if I have on three layers of Morphe shadow, you can still feel like the tackiness of the base through them. They're very, I don't know if I want to say thin formula. And then the purples, I've had a lot of trouble blending them out, but apparently purple eyeshadow is hard to make. And since I'm, you know, new to makeup and not very good at it, I'm not going to dock Morphe any points for that. Next, I'm going to put red carpet into the crease with the Sephora Pro Tapered Crease number 19. I'm a little worried about it being called red carpet because it looks very orange in the pan. Well, an orangey red, I guess. One thing I will say about these shadows is even though the formula seems a little thin, they do have a very nice payoff with the pigment. So the colors there, I don't think I've had an issue with any of them except maybe one of the light green ones and maybe one of the light brown ones uh, not being completely pigmented when you first put it on. You really only need a little bit of shadow and they don't really need any building up. And now I'm just going back in with that same Sephora fluffy crease brush that I used to put on Naked from the Urban Decay palette to buff out the edge. Next, I'll be working the color Power Slayer into my outer V with the Sephora Pointed Crease Brush, and I'll be blending that out with the same Sephora Pro Tapered Crease number 19 that I used to put on the red carpet shade. I'm starting off by going in very lightly since purples are some of the colors that I was having issues with, so I want to make sure I'm just doing a very tiny amount each time I go in and putting that almost exactly where I want it since I was having an issue with them getting kind of patchy when they blended out. Next, I'll be attempting a cut crease with Maybelline's Instant Age Rewind in the color Light and putting that on with a Sephora Precision Shadow Brush. Now, as you saw earlier, these shadows do blend fine, but I, for me, not being very experienced, it took me a lot of extra time to blend that. Like for instance, I've only have on three shadows right now, I think, and uh, so far I'm at almost 13 minutes with my makeup application. So while the pigment is there, 
and you can get them to blend out. For someone with not much experience like myself, that's taking quite a bit of time. Uh, the reason I wanted to try the Instant Age Rewind today to do a cut crease is because I tried it yesterday with the Naked palette and everything eventually did end up creasing and getting in my hooded eyes. So I wanted to see if maybe I just put it on too thick or if it was an issue with the powders in the Naked palette. So I'm giving it another try. Next, I'm going to take the color Bright Eyes and pat that over the center of the lid with a Sephora Blending Shadow Brush. Right now, we're setting at about 15 minutes, which I guess is okay, considering that this is the second time I've ever tried to do a cut crease, and I did have to take a little extra effort blending the shadows out. I did want to mention that since I'm starting a Pan That Palette and a Project Pan, for my This Week on Trial, instead of having to use them all seven days out of the week, each product on trial must be used at least five times during that week. And that way I have a little extra play time for the stuff I'm trying to pan. Next, I'm going to put Bossy AF on the outer third of my lid using that same Sephora blending shadow brush. And then to tone down that shimmer and to brighten up the look a little, I'm going to go into the original Lorac Pro palette and use the color white in my inner corner and on my brow. And I'm going to be using a Luxie 213T brush. Okay, I've made a bit of a mess with this. That's a very powdery shadow. So I'm going to go back in with that Sephora Pro Tapered Crease number 19 and try to smooth that out a little bit. And now to screw everything up since it's going so well, I am going to go in with Black Magic on a Morphe M506 into my outer V and kind of right along the edge of that cut crease to try to define it a little bit more. And I'll be blending that out with a MAC 224S. I'm just using the absolute tiniest bit amount of this product. I am banging it off my brush so much that I'm afraid I'm going to break the brush and as you can see, it is extremely pigmented. For a black, it went on very smoothly and it's blending out pretty well. So I would say for me and my limited makeup experience, this is definitely a good black. Okay, we are now at 26 minutes and so far all of that makeup has just been on the eyes. So I'm going to pause here and start moving on to the rest of my face. I don't know, for some reason I feel a little bird-like in this look. I don't know why. Does that, anyone else get that feeling? I, I don't know what it is, but something about this feels very bird-like to me. I'm going to go clean up all the fallout and put on primer so I can get ready to start working on the face next. Okay, now that I've got the edges of this cleaned up, I think this is definitely my favorite look that I have done with this palette. So I'm really enjoying that picking out quads thing and then just kind of, you know, random whatever's in the quad is in the quad and that's what you use. Uh, it worked out really well for me today, so yeah, this is this isn't bad. I I think on the I think on the Morphe palette just today this get ready with me alone. I may have changed my mind just a little about the palette, so we'll see at the end of the video how I'm still feeling. There still was plenty of glitter that fell out, and not a lot of it wanted to clean up, but it's not bad. I mean, I shouldn't say plenty of glitter because there wasn't fallout everywhere. It's just you know sometimes the sparkles don't want to stick. I'm pleasantly surprised, not just with the palette, but with myself, because this is the only the second time I've ever tried a cut crease, and the first time all the, I think I used too much foundation, or too much concealer or something, and it, the colors kind of, you know, got all stuck up in the hood, and uh, it just blended really nicely. It took some, it made me take some extra time to blend it. I'm trying to like lean back and get in frame and still be close up to see my eyes, it's whatever. If you take your time and you blend these out, but it's pretty good compared to previous experiences this week. I am I'm very happy. I would do this look again. Next, we're moving on to the base with the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Foundation Full Coverage Moisturizer in the shade Medium. And I'm putting that on with a Sephora foundation brush. 
Now I've already primed my face with the Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer, Primer Plus Moisturizer in one, and I used the Sephora Foundation Brush to put that on. I haven't really used brushes very much with foundation, so I'm pretty sure this brush has never been used. So I cleaned it and then I used it to put on the primer just to kind of break it in a little since it is new to maybe give a little more bend to the bristles so it would hopefully perform better. Wow, that appears to have blended out really nicely. I am impressed. I've never used this, well, I've barely ever used a brush before and I've definitely never used this with the brush and it looks pretty good. I am going to go ahead and go over it with a damp beauty blender just to make sure there aren't any brush lines somewhere that I missed. Okay, next is the IT Cosmetics Bye Bye Concealer and I was really impressed with the brush, with the precision of being able to use it. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and try to smooth the concealer out with the brush. I always put it on initially with my fingertips because it is a very thick product. You need just like a pinhead size amount of it. So I'm going to try blending that out with the brush and see how it works. And now going back in with my dampened beauty blender to try to smooth that out. Yes, I'm sorry, I had to use my viewfinder earlier to put on the initial layer of concealer since I used both hands to do it and I couldn't hold a mirror at the same time. I will say I don't know that the brush made that much difference in the under eye area smoothing it out, though it is nice to have to go around uh, the eyeshadow area since I put on my eyeshadow first. but. At least that size of brush, not necessary for smoothing out my concealer, but it worked very nice with the foundation. Alright, I am sitting at exactly 30 minutes so far, not too bad. It's time to powder all of this stuff in place. I will be using the Becca Hydra Mist Set and Refresh Powder, and I will be putting that on my under eyes with that same baby itty bitty dampened beauty blender. And then on my face, I will be using the Sephora Powder Brush. Now I have to be very careful on my under eye area because I do have old lady creepy eye bags and I don't bake under my eyes, but I do have to set the concealer. So I'll be putting on the lightest amount of powder possible on my under eyes and hopefully I won't get that nasty creepy effect, even though I kind of already have it because that's just my face. As for the powder, I take kind of the smallest amount possible, I barely dip my brush into it, and then I stipple it all over the face. Then once my face is covered, I will go in with the same brush and do kind of just a, a little light buffing motion to make sure everything's blended together and smoothed out. Okay, next is brows, which is something I have not even begun to teach myself how to do, and since brows are not part of the This Week on Trial products, I am just going to go in and try to do a light little dusting of Benefit's Gimme Brow in the shade 5. Holy crap, I just went from having almost no brows to creating a wildebeest on the center of my forehead. So this stuff is very potent. I'm kind of excited to actually learn how to use it because that's amazing. Next it's back to the face with the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Bronzer in Radiant Light Bronze and just some sort of fancy cute little kabuki brush. I have no idea what brand this is or where it came from. I know a lot of people like to do this as kind of a finishing step to blend everything together and buff everything out smoothly, but I really don't want to disturb the placement of my brush and my highlighter, so that's why I'm doing it first. Next, I'll be going with the Milani Powder Blush in T-Rose number 08. And I will be putting that on with a Sonia Kashuk brush. I believe I got this in a set at Target a year or two ago. And it works great for blush. And I do like to take my blush kind of up onto the temples to give my face more of a lifted look. Next is the ColourPop Super Shock Cheek in Flexitarian. I'll be using that as my highlight. I will be dabbing that on with my fingers and then blending it out with an Ulta Beauty blush brush that I got in a set. And now for a quick curl of the lashes with the Tweezer Man Lash Curlers. Next I'll be layering the matte colors from the Morphe palette that I used on my eyelids, Red Carpet, Power Slayer, and Black Magic. I will be using those to buff out my lower lash line with the Sephora Angled Liner Brush. 
So I'm starting with red carpet and smudging that pretty much across my entire lower lash line. Then I'm going in with Power Slayer and putting it on the outer two thirds. And then finally I'll be using Black Magic just at the very outer edge. Next I'll be using Physician Formulas Eye Booster 2-in-1 Lash Boosting Eyeliner and Serum in Ultra Black and I will be putting that on my upper lash line. Since I do really enjoy the current look I have going on, I am not going to ruin it by attempting a winged liner. This is just going to be to reinforce the color at the base of my lashes. Next I'll be using the Clinique Lash Building Primer and the Clinique High Impact Mascara in 01 Black. The more I settle into this look and the more I wear it, I am loving this eyeshadow more and more and more. And now for a quick mist of the Herbivore Rose Hibiscus Coconut Water Hydrating Face Mist. Yes, I forgot to put this on before I put on my mascara and eyeliner, so we'll see how this goes. It definitely has an aggressive sprayer. Okay, now to check the damage from spraying that on over my mascara and eyeliner. I think we're good! And we'll finish the look with the Urban Decay Metalized Lipstick in Marana, which is part of my Pan That palette, just because it's here and I need to use it, and why not? Okay, so here's the final look using all of the products in my This Week on Trial. And now we'll get into the verdict. I apologize if you hear a strange noise in the background. I've had to turn on the heater at my feet. I should have mentioned that earlier because I'm not sure if it's feeding through on the mic or not. So first off, for the Morphe palette, the 35M, which is the Boss Mood. There it is one more time. Uh, I am starting to enjoy it. It was a little hard for me at first. I always thought it was a good palette, but as a beginner, um, not being too confident in my blending level and in uh, the use of bright colors instead of just browns. It was a little difficult for me when I first got into it, but the more I played with it, and then as you see today, just seven days in, I think I came up with something pretty good. And I love that idea of just kind of putting my finger there in the middle of four shadows and just wherever it lands is that's the quad for the day. It kind of puts me outside my comfort zone and gives me more experience. So I do enjoy this palette. I would recommend it. I would just say that it is not beginner friendly, but it is beginner usable. You're just going to have to have a little patience, take your time blending, but I'm actually finding that I am learning a lot more about how to apply eyeshadow and blend by having a palette that's a slightly more difficult but still usable. It's really teaching me kind of how to get in there and blend stuff. So I enjoy that and I appreciate it and I'm glad I have it. And yes, uh, in hindsight, I am happy that I bought it. I would buy it again if I had the choice. Next we'll go into the IT Cosmetics Bye Bye Foundation and Bye Bye Concealer. Um, I do enjoy this much more than this. This is a really good concealer if you want a full coverage concealer and just a teeny tiny amount. I mean it's going to last you for a while so you're really going to need a little bit of experience using a product like this as emollient as it is. Um, but I mean it's, it's nice. I enjoy it. It definitely does its job uh, but it's a little on the thick side. So that for me is taking a little getting used to and this little tube is going to last you forever because you use next to nothing. So I probably would not purchase that one again but if that is the kind of concealer you want then I would recommend it to you. It's just not what I'm looking for in a concealer. Uh, for the Bye Bye Foundation, I do really enjoy this. Um, I use this you know, more as a CC cream because it's a Bye Bye Foundation than as an actual foundation. I do have other BB creams to go through in my collection. And uh, I think that there's a good chance that this may be the one that I stick with and repurchase. I have to go through the rest of those first, but this is very high on my possibility list for a repurchase. Next is the Becca's Hydra Mist Set and Refresh Powder. I do enjoy this. I am, again, new to using powders and stuff. So uh, as far as, yes, it does what it does. I like the cooling sensation. I do think it goes on nice under my eyes without getting too powdery or cakey looking. So I am enjoying this and this will also be a possibility that by the time I get through the rest of my primers or by the time I get through the rest of my powders, uh, unless I find one better than this, this is definitely on my possible 
repurchase list. Now, there is one drawback to this though. Once you open it, the moisture thing will start to go away, so you need to keep it tightly closed at all times when you're not using it. And then it's one of those things that once you start using it, you really shouldn't stop. You should just keep using it till you get it used up. And since we're going into winter and I do need more hydration, this was the perfect time for me to try it. So this will be the only powder that I use until I get it used up. I'm just gonna run straight through it uh, so it doesn't dry out on me. The Milani Powder Blush in T-Rose. It is beautiful. It does exactly what a brush is supposed to. It's a drugstore, so it's very affordable. Again, uh, if I ever run out of blushes in my life, which I probably won't, but if I ever need a color like this again, this would be a repurchase for this particular shade. The Hourglass Ambient Lighting Bronzer in Radiant Bronze Light. I do like this. For me, I don't really know that it's necessary. It's something I'm going to have to keep playing with and because uh, it's the first time really using a setting powder so I don't have any others to judge it off of. I'm sure that I will find something that does this exact same job that is cheaper. I mean, it is really nice, I do like it, but I just don't know how much it does for me in my makeup routine versus the cost. So once I get through the rest of my bronzers, we'll see. This one may probably be a not repurchase, um, because I'm sure I can find something that dupes this for a better price. But if you are looking for something in this price range, it is very nice. For the ColourPop Super Shock Cheek in Flexitarian, I do like this. It does its job. It goes on very wet looking. It was a little difficult for me to use because I couldn't figure out use a finger, use a brush. I ended up having to use a combination of both. But again, it is um, a very affordable line. So if you want this kind of a glow, I would recommend it. And again, once I get through all of my highlighters, which will probably be never, I don't know if I would repurchase that one again, but I probably would because I think that in that formula and how it lands on my face like this, I think that is uh, the only thing in my collection currently that does that. So that is a possible repurchase, but I'll never run out of highlighters, so there's not a chance that I'll be buying it again anytime soon. And finally, for my Clinique Lash Building Primer and High Impact Mascara in 01, I did like both of these. I probably would not repurchase it though because for me this mascara will on its own at least not later with other stuff It's a little too dramatic for my days when I just want to be Natural looking but it's not dramatic enough for the days that I want something with more drama So since I would have to pair it with other products just to get the more drama I want and I couldn't use it on a natural day anyway uh, This would not be a repurchase for me But if you are looking for a mascara and primer that gets you in that middle ground then this would be a good choice. So that's it for my second This Week on Trial. That's my verdict. Uh, tell me in the comments below what you thought, if you've tried any of these products, if you're doing any project like this. And thank you all for stopping by and checking it out. And have a great day. Bye.